from SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California. It's a special Saturday night edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Justin Herbert and the L.A. Chargers taking on Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. Night beginning to fall over Southern California, but the lights are shining bright here at the spectacular SoFi Stadium in Metropolitan Los Angeles. Tonight, it's a preseason matchup between the Dallas Cowboys and the Los Angeles Chargers. Charles Davis, happy to be back alongside you. And I'll tell you what, yes, it's just week two of the preseason, but now they've got one game under their belts. And a lot of guys trying to prove some stuff down on the field here today. Not only that, these coaches like to win. And I used to think it really didn't matter who won in the preseason. Then I watched some of those shows that the NFL does. And you see the coaches in preseason after a loss jumping all over their guys. So I learned one valuable lesson. Wins and losses count no matter what time of year it is. Dak Prescott and Dallas taking the field for their first possession. Dak now in his seventh season in charge of the Cowboys. Two-time Pro Bowler. And not only was it great to see Dak Prescott make his return in 2021, it's even better to see him play the best ball of his career. He didn't lead Dallas to just a division title and its best record in six years. Dallas also led the league in yards and points, the first time it has led in both since 1971. They'll start the drive with Elliott. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That's a start they can live with. 15 yards on their first play from scrimmage. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all challenging that defense. And on that go-around, the offense won the challenge. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. They keep on the ground with Elliott. And some nifty running here as he'll take this across midfield and down to the 47. Give him 10 there, good enough for a Cowboy first down. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now, and that's that good arrogance, believing you can run the football whenever you get good and ready. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. They're looking for Lamb, but it's intercepted. And the Chargers are going to get the football here as they force the INT on the game's opening drive. Not something you see very often from a quarterback of his caliber, an opening drive interception. Oh, there's no doubt in my mind that even he's surprised at how that one played out. But we know this guy is not going to stop him from continuing to fire as this game goes along. But I give a little nod of respect across the field for that one and let him know he'll be back the very next series. Chargers in good field position to start out. First and 10 at their own 46. And here's a six-year man, Austin Eckler. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. Drop for a loss there on a nice effort by Osa Adigizua. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. 
a loss resulted. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. And the Cowboys here on third down, bringing in an extra defensive back. A shotgun snap for Herbert. Looking middle, and that's complete. And he is going to have the Chargers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. After getting that turnover on the first drive of the game, you'd hate to just stall out the momentum, go three and out. They're able to avoid that there. And we talk about complementary football all the time, but I think it's a little bit deeper than that. Defense went out, forced a turnover, gave the ball to the offense. It's now the offense's responsibility to pay that off for them, to show respect to them. Hey, you guys got us a turnover? <laughs> we appreciate it. They want to continue their drive. Running on first down, Eckler. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Throwing on second and eight, Herbert. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys' 32-yard line. It'll go as a gain of 11 and a Charger first from the 32 now. Here's first and 10. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field, and here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Tackle there by Leighton Vander Esch. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Herbert now. Man open left side. It's Williams. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Finding Williams once more, complete. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys 14. The Chargers passing game rolling a bit here. They've got another first. Really been an ideal start for them. They get the turnover on the opening possession. Now here they are moving the ball straight down the field on their first drive. And that feels good, but you know on their side of the field, all they're thinking is finish this drive off because they took it away, right? So now you've got them back on their heels a little bit. Now go down, put a touchdown on them. Look out. You've won the mental battle early in the game, and that may carry over for you. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. They go back to the ground now with Eckler, and he stopped immediately there. J. Ron Curse in on the tackle. And that run was memorable for only one reason. There was absolutely no place to run with the football. No gaps, no creases, no gain. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. Option play, and they'll give to Eckler. And all the way down inside the five to the four. It's a 10-yard gain there to set him up first and goal. No score after one on EA Sports. First and goal, a chance to convert that early turnover into points. Eckler, touchdown, Chargers. Some good running there at the end of the drive. He had the burst that set up the first and goal, and then one play later, he's in the end zone. Brandon, what I liked about that sequence is, I'm not sure who made the play call, 
but they understood the situation, understood the momentum. A nice hard charging run, give it right back to him and let him cap things off. Dustin Hopkins on now to add the extra point. And the Chargers grab the 7 0 lead. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it's Austin Eckler who finishes things off with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. Fields it right around the goal line. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Second drive forthcoming here for the Dallas Cowboys. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, everyone has matchups that they like better than others. Where they think they have an advantage, dial up some of those plays. Try and go to those spots and get your offense moving. Let's start on the ground with Elliott. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by J.C. Jackson. And the Chargers are going to take possession of the football. So rare to see any quarterback toss back-to-back -to -back interceptions in the NFL, regardless of status or experience. Whether it's him personally or just the offensive game plan, I think this defense is reading something out there, and they're holding the upper hand. The Chargers get set to go here for their second drive. They'll have good field position here following the interception and a chance to build on their lead as they start with a first and 10. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. After the turnover, here's Herbert. He'll find Williams on the slant. And he'll be marked down right at the 20-yard line. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target a gain of eight there on the play and they'll be left with second and a couple Herbert will give this one to Eckler. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, and now they go from second and two to a tough third and four. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. Now it's Herbert on the crossing route, complete. That's Carter. And the Chargers are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And remember, this drive started off following the turnover. And they've taken no time working their way down the short field. A nice connection there, and now they're looking at a first and goal. it in with Eckler and he pushes forward but comes up short of the goal line as he'll get a yard down to about the one good work there holding him out on first down and this is going to be a battle down here on the goal line can they hold their ground for two maybe even three more plays second and goal from the one Eckler again and he is into the end zone touchdown Los Angeles Austin Eckler 
ready for the regular season with his second touchdown of the game. And the Chargers go up by two touchdowns. So his strong first half continues as he finds the end zone here for the second time. And definitely good blocking at the point of attack. And you just have to love watching the way he can create space down near the goal line. And he's able to take it into the end zone. Now it's Hopkins to add the extra point. And it's good to make it 14-0. That time a six-play drive. And it's Austin Eckler who finishes things off with a touchdown run. Touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. Take it in at the three. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. And he's been throwing the ball up for grabs here early on. Two passes, two interceptions. He'll try and rein things in a bit here as he starts again on first down. So Prescott to the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 27. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. He'll fire deep downfield for Lamb. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. And this offense needed something to try and seize the momentum a little bit, and that might have been exactly what they needed. Now they have a chance to go downfield and score and cut into the lead. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Now Prescott. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. It's incomplete. Took a shot. Couldn't connect. I like the thought process there. They connected on a big play, and sometimes you find the defense vulnerable. So they went for the bigger shot. Went for it all on that one. This time, they were ready for it. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Out of the gun, it's Elliott. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Now the Cowboys are going to burn the first of their timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. Conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Prescott now. And it's incomplete. Took a shot. Couldn't connect. As we thought they might do here in week two of the preseason. They've left their starting quarterback out there for this second quarter. But I would imagine we will not see him after halftime. Yeah, this is the time of year you've got to get your back up some reps and make sure you protect your starting quarterback. That's going to be caught. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. This is first and goal, and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. Now Elliott, and he is into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Ezekiel Elliott taking it in from two yards out. And the Cowboys are back within a score. So, partner, it was a passing game that drove them down the field. But when they get close, they trust that man in the backfield. And he took them home. And they trust their offensive line as well because so many of these units, they specialize in either pass protection or run blocking. This group shows its versatility and gets both done on this drive. 
And Jonathan Garibay out for the PAT. And that one makes it 14 to seven. So the drive there took six plays and it culminates in a touchdown run by Ezekiel Elliott. Garibay back out there now to send this one away. And Carter deciding not to bring this one out. L.A. readies for its next possession. Well, this offense looks like they have a little extra pep in their step as they take the field here for drive number three because, remember, Charles, drives one and two both ended in the end zone. Yeah, and right now they've just got to be careful not to lean into overconfidence because every drive has a life of its own. But I like the way that they've started, the way that they're going about doing things right now. They've got a chance for that. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Picked up by Kelvin Joseph. And the Cowboys are going to take possession of the football. Well, this was a 14-0 game not too long ago. Things were looking pretty good. Then you give up the touchdown on the last drive. Now the interception. So that's a lesson in trying to stay vigilant, isn't it? You have to stay on top of things. Can't relax too much because, as you noted, things change. Now they've got to go out there and get a spark going again and try and slow down this comeback. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Following the interception, here's Prescott. That is caught by Lamb. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. That one goes for 24 yards. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Now Prescott. Touchdown, Cowboys! Michael Gallup, a 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Cowboys are an extra point away from drawing level. CD for them, this has just been an offensive explosion here in the second quarter. Yeah, held scoreless in the first quarter. Now they find the end zone again here in the second. Sometimes you just have to have some patience. A lot of people think it's always an adjustment. You have to change what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to do your game plan just a little bit better. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. Extra point up and good by Garibay. And that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. From the six. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. Here comes the Chargers offense now back out onto the field. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. Short completion, just four yards, and it'll be second down. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, short tackle. Looking to throw again on second down. Herbert looking lost in Eckler's way again. 
And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. And it appears we have a Charger shaken up on that last play. More from L.A. in a moment. down it's Herbert and his throw is going to be incomplete so now here in the second week of the preseason you'd expect the starters play a little bit more than they did in week one but not a whole lot so if you're an offensive coordinator what are you looking for what you're looking for is things getting cleaned up as you go along because most of your playbooks probably installed how well are they handling it easy in and out of the huddle no mental mistakes are they starting to look like a good offensive football team short little throw to Ebron now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Again, Herbert. And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. On is the punter Scott here as he gets this one away. And this one goes angling out of bounds, and it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. About set for this next drive by the Cowboys offense. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively off. A fight for it, and this is caught. It's caught indeed. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. And this will be spotted on the other side of the field. It's a 61-yard attempt. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice and ambitious effort, but it's well short. And this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. It's almost a little jarring to see a holder set up on the other side of midfield. I haven't brought out my binoculars to make sure on that one. That is showing an awful lot of confidence in a kicker to try and hit from 61 yards. And this one winds up no good. And this one is incomplete. So we've hit halftime all even at 14 apiece. As we are off to Orlando now to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? Okay, Brandon, thank you very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in just a minute. Week two of the preseason is upon us. Each team now with just one more game after this one. And then we will get it all started as we normally do on the first Thursday after Labor Day. In our game, at the very least, you can't say it's not competitive. All tied up at halftime. And for the call of the second half, we get you back out to Brandon God. Okay, Coach. Yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. Expect to see a good number of backups going forward as we are back and underway here in preseason week two. Joe Reed going to return it from his end zone. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Out comes the Chargers as they'll go on offense now to start this third quarter. This offense ready for the first drive of the third quarter. Well, quarters number one and two entertaining. We saw some good offense points put up, Charles, and all tied on the scoreboard. And it sets us up for what could be a really fun second half because we've seen both sides score almost at will here in the first half. And now here in the second half, Getting the ball first, you've got to think, hey, we can go out and really run our offense the way we did in the first half. But if I'm a defensive player, all I'm thinking is, can I make a play to really help out my team and break this streak of offense? 
Oh, free safety blitz. That can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he'd better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Here's the first throw now for Chase Daniel. And he fires one that's intercepted. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Cowboy defense has a touchdown. But Charles, you can just see the frustration on the sideline. Safe to say that's not how they expected this series to go. The ball only went one way, and it was backward into their own end zone, courtesy of the pick six. And Brandon, how often do we hear offenses tell us before a game they want to end every series with a kick, right? A punt, a PAT, or a field goal? In case of a defense, they want to end with a punt or a takeaway. And we saw the takeaway right there, and it turned out to be a takeaway that turned into six points. Extra point up and good by Garibay. And the lead is now 21-14. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Fielded just outside the goal line. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. And the Chargers offense back out and ready to go. And the points, they have come fast and furious in this quarter. You really don't want to be on the defensive side of the ball right now, do you? Because you're either thinking, my replacement may get an opportunity. <laughs> Your head better be on a swivel. Totally. Or maybe I just need to get out of the game for a while because I just can't slow these guys down. They've got to figure out a way to disrupt these offenses. And typically, one guy makes a big play, and that can help change things. They'll be looking for disruption on both sides right now. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball. How much yards can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. Now the fourth round pick from A&M. This is Isaiah Spiller taken down at the 47-yard line. Defensively, we always know that he is tough at run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Throwing on second and eight, Daniel. A quick throw there, going to be batted away and incomplete. You know, during these preseason games, we're in week two right now. It's always funny looking at our spot charts up here in the booth because with all the guys that might play in this one, it seems to get bigger and bigger each year. Yeah, we pretty much supersize them, don't we? Because, you, you know, remember, they're carrying 90 now. And with the new rules, they'll carry 90 all the way through the preseason before they make the final cut. Oh, yeah, a lot of guys to learn for these games. Throwing on third down, Daniel. That's complete to the tight end, Everett. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys' 34-yard line. The Chargers passing game rolling a bit here. They've got another first. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Off play action, Daniel. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. Damone Clark, give him the credit for the sack and a loss of 14 yards. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense. So he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist.
So after the sack, a scenario you certainly don't work on too often. Second and 24. Back to throw, Daniel. He gets this out to Spiller. And they're gonna get this to about the 44-yard line. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back and it can turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he's gonna be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield stripe. Neville Gallimore powering his way in and burying him. Well, third and long, you knew that he was going to throw it. He just couldn't find anybody to throw it to. Yeah, and it shouldn't have been a surprise, but that was perfect execution of their nickel defense. That fifth defensive back, the extra defender, he really tightened up things downfield and coverage, and they were able to get to him in the pocket. Here's J.K. Scott now. They'll boot it away from about his 35. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. The Cowboys about set to take over on offense. And the last time that they were on the field, a little demoralizing. Missed field goal. You know, always feel like you want to get it in the end zone, but then, oh, well, at least we're going to get three. Didn't go through the goalpost, so. It does test the mental processes of the team, though, doesn't it? Because when you miss a field goal, it's amazing how fast they want to turn on the guy kicking the ball. But you need to keep his confidence up because how many times have we seen games where it comes down to a stretch? And guess what? You need that guy to make the big kick for your team to move on or to win a game. Make sure you keep him happy. Make sure you keep him comfortable. I'm sure you always treated the kicker nicely, though, right? You know, truthfully, I did. Good. I always did because those guys, they won us a whole lot of games. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. It's a gain of 12, and the Cowboys pick up the first. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Rush. And this nearly an interception, but it's incomplete. Well, a turnover really would have helped him there, but not to be. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and 10. Now Rush. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. And the Chargers are going to take possession of the football. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. And the L.A. offense ready for this next possession. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and ten. to 10 is Spiller and he'll lose yardage here back at the 41 officially it's a one yard loss that's going to bring up second and 11. I see a shake of the head as he gets up and you've got to imagine he's thinking guys you got to help me out he's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. the loss to start out. Here's second and 11. Daniel now. 
And his throw is incomplete. Well, he certainly didn't like what he saw at all in the coverage on his primary reads, and he didn't even have any luck trying to get back to his safety valve. Give defense a credit. Coverage is in lockdown mode everywhere. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. Daniel. And he'll find Everett there, complete. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. So just three yards on the completion there. And it'll be fourth down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because... He really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this will stay at a seven-point game. And now here come the Cowboys. Their defense was able to hold serve, albeit with a little help from that missed field goal as they settle in now first and ten. And any time you see a kicker trot out to try one for 56 yards, you know everything's got to come off perfectly for it to have a chance. If the laces aren't quite right, if he doesn't hit the fat part of the ball just right, it's unlikely to go through. And that one winds up no good. And they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And he's going to get across midfield and into Charger territory. Going an eight-yard gain, much better shape now on third and just a yard. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. And he will have a Cowboys first down, and comfortably so, as he gets five there on third and a yard. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. They'll go with Pollard here on first down. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. You've got to be impressed by the defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Here's Pollard again. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, they didn't accomplish their goal. They didn't get a stop there, gave up another first down. They have all three timeouts in their pocket. I think defensively, you've got to start thinking about using them here. I was just going to ask you at what point you think now's the go time? I think now's the go time. I don't think you sit back and wait because they can take a lot of time off the clock between plays and run three to four and really put you in a stressful spot. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. They run straight ahead here with Pollard. Oh, he's got a little daylight. Oh, and fine work there as he gets this thing down to the 11-yard line. Holding. 
can see this quite a bit on running plays with the guys out wide. A lot of times, though, it doesn't get caught. You're exactly right because it's away from the play usually, so a lot of it goes undetected. But I know this will surprise you. I coach some receivers in the offseason. We work a lot on hand placement and blocking downfield. Might want to take that course. And he's brought down, but not before a gain of 13, down to the 13. First and 10 in the red zone. Not too shabby for his first carry of the game. That's exactly what most teams are looking for, a really good change of pace back. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Now a shotgun handoff to Pollard. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. 50 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. I'm assuming they're keeping this football on the ground, right? I would think so because you're looking at the clock. That's in your favor. You look at the geography of the field, right, where you are. That's in your favor as well. Keep it on the ground. Keep pounding. Run that clock down. You got everything working in your direction. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Pollard will score. Touchdown, Cowboys. And just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in after report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Garibay on for the extra point. He's got it as they double up the lead. This one's now 28-14. So that drive in total eight plays. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. Garibay back out there now to send this one away. This will be fielded inside the five. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Down under two minutes to go in this football game. Now worth reminding at this point, no overtime in the preseason. But that may not come into play here in a two-score game late. And that one complete to Joe Reed. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. First down now, but the clock continues to move. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. Ooh, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. And the Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. They go play action with Daniel. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. First down now, but that clock rolling. 
to throw is Daniel. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion. So I think both sides are going to savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a non-stop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now because I think they're going to try and get several plays off in quick succession if they can. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four-down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they got to go and get it right here, right now. From the shotgun on third, Daniel. That one caught by Carter. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys' 13-yard line. Got his man complete over the middle. That's French. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in the game. Second and five from the eight. Throwing again is Daniel. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed. But if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right. And if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope. When they had to slog their way downfield, they got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah, yeah you know, it doesn't you got, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> Here's Hopkins now for the extra point. He's got it, and they're back within a touchdown at 28-21. A 10-play drive that time, and it ends with the Chargers getting into the end zone. So 20 seconds remain. It'll come down to this. And this is going to be recovered by the hands team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it. They do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Now a give here to Pollard, and he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. Chargers going to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 14 seconds to go in the game. The Cowboys on their way to victory as they take a knee. So this one will end in a victory for the Dallas Cowboys. And a little bit of a surprise, they lose the turnover battle, but wind up winning the ball game. And this is very unusual because you know all teams stress winning the turnover battle as a key indicator to winning ball games. So when you get something that goes against the grain, like the one we saw here, it's quite the oddity. Now let's face it, they'll be very happy that they pulled this off, but they do know that in the future, they've got work on taking care of the football because this won't happen very often. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. So long, everybody.